Welcome to my wash journey. I'm starting this channel because we need a place to talk about this incredible hobby. And I know that your friends are already tired of hearing about watches, right? So I'm hoping to grow this community where we can share our experiences. But before uh, getting into the, the topic for today, let's do a quick wrist check. Uh, I am wearing my Steinhardt Metropole. I'm going to do a review of this watch because it's incredible and I learned a very important lesson about watch collecting because of this, uh, this particular model. So look out for that. But today we're going to talk about my first visit to uh, Rolex AD. And of course, I did my research. It's my first time. So many questions. And here's some advice that I found. Quote, Rolex dealers want someone that not only uh, is wealthy, but is willing to go above and beyond for it. That's why I suggest you find an AD that has an attractive wife or girlfriend. Get to know her, wine her, and dine her, or him. Get them to fall in love with you into a full-blown affair. About six months into it, tell them you want a watch. That watch. They'll get this for you because, well, you're just awesome. They will most likely tell their AD spouse it's for a girlfriend, but it's for you, buddy. When I read that, I thought, wow, is it really that easy? Only six month wait. I can tell you, I got so excited. Okay, sure, I'm joking, but you hear these scary stories, right? And I don't have a spend history. And what about a dress code? Do I need to look like a million bucks? Should I buy a tuxedo? It's all a mystery. So I drive over to a local AD. Here's a picture. And of course, you stand outside looking at the windows and they are all empty. And you wonder, why am I staring at the windows? It's empty. When I walk in, there is this dead silence. All the sales staff turn their heads and give you that, you know, once over. Who is this guy? Does he have any money? And why was he standing outside staring at empty windows? Makes you wonder. Honestly, I could tell they didn't want to talk to me. They had this reluctance. I don't know how to describe it exactly. Something about uh, a fear of wasting their time, something like that. Finally, this guy smiles and comes over to me and I'm just standing there not knowing what to do. Let's call him Steve because that's his name, Steve. And actually he's a cool guy. I don't recall what he said, but it was an invitation to express my interest. So I hit him up with my very first point. I told him that I was specifically interested in the Oyster Perpetual. Now I could see him start to relax. At least I knew <laughs> I was in a Rolex shop. But seriously, I think it was very important that I, you know, that I identified the specific model. I got the feeling some people actually walk in there and say, hey, I want a Rolex. And that's all they know. So we chatted for a bit and it started to get more relaxing. Honestly, I was very nervous going in there. I think you could tell. He was probably more relaxed than me and he helped me to get into the discussion. So then I hit him up with my next point. I told him that I'd read complaints about the latest movement, the 3200 series. And there were online complaints and it was real. I found them on Watch You Seek and other forums. But you know what? He wasn't offended. In fact, he liked that I had done some, uh, that had some technical knowledge and had done some in-depth research. He was getting the sense that yes, I'm a real wash guy. So then I shared some stories about how my father had handled uh, many Rolexes in his life and I had experienced them with him. That's the story for another time. I'll tell that in another video. But he smiled and understood. By the way, there was something going on in the background. When I had first walked in, there was this very attractive Asian girl who was clearly a salesperson. At first, she ignored me. And then she started to listen to our conversation. By this point, she was clearly kicking herself because I was obviously a serious buyer, no BS. So uh, finally, uh, we got down to the details and Steve took down my info. You know what? They are actually a little bit careless. He handed me a card to fill out, but he said, just put down your name and number. And of course, which watch you wanted, the color and all that. But that's it. And it was really as simple as that. 
great. I walked out feeling great and looking forward to hearing from him. Now don't get me wrong, I know it takes a while, but I just knew that he liked me and he wanted to call me. But it didn't work out that way. Because on my second visit, things got a lot darker. Now, I don't want this video to go on too long. So I'm gonna pick up the story in a follow-up video. Check that out to find out what happened. Did I get the Rolex? Did I walk out in tears? I'll catch you in the next video.